Welcome to Bamberger Forestry Farm. In this little short video, I'm going to show you some of the best growth, the big trees of the farm. Now, we, are, we only started planting trees 28 years ago, so nothing you'll see will be more than 28 years old. I planted everything and I've managed them all for various products, particularly for high quality timber. This is a spotted gum, Carimbia maculata, planted 28 years ago, pruned up to improve its wood quality to about five or six meters. So I can measure the diameter by placing a tape around the circumference of the tree and reading off. This tree is 70 centimeters in diameter. It's grown to 70 centimeters in just 28 years. It's probably growing faster now than it ever has before because I've allowed the canopy to fully develop. So this is about ready for harvest, but I might grow it out for another 10 or five or 10 years to get a large one meter diameter saw log. This is the only eucalypt I'll show you. This is actually an Otway messmate. It's a hybrid between the mountain ash, Eucalyptus regnans, and the local messmate, the Eucalyptus obliqua. The hybrid does seem to perform better on a number of different sites. Uh, this one's done particularly well. Again, 28 years old, its diameter, and that's coming out at 86 centimeters in diameter over that period of time. Now that's an excellent size for sawmilling, and uh, should I need some good furniture grade timber, I'll come back and take this tree. The next tree I've chosen is this uh, Australian silky oak that grows naturally up in New South Wales, but grows in gardens and parks all around the country, very tolerant of extreme hot and dry conditions, which is great when we're looking to having higher temperatures in the future planted this tree 28 years ago and it's not as big as a eucalypt but quality is important. This tree is 44 centimetres in diameter and when it's about 55 or 60 centimetres in diameter I'll be able to mill this for high quality quarter sawn, highly figured Australian native timber, ideal for furniture and, uh, and other high value appearance uses. Let's have a look at another one. In 1987 I fenced out this creek that had cows and sheep wandering into it before we came here. And I planted trees. One of the species we planted was the indigenous blackwood, Acacia melanoxylon. It's not the fastest grower, but as many Victorian and Tasmanians know, it produces a lovely timber. This tree here, in 28 years, is 32 centimeters in diameter. And that's about the best I can do because of our dry summers. But hopefully it'll develop as the canopy does and I remove some of the competing eucalypts when they get harvested, these trees will fill out and start growing a lot quicker. One of our best blackwoods. A moment ago we looked at the silky oak. This is another one of the oaks, our Australian she-oak. This one, the river she-oak from New South Wales and uh, it's growing quite well. Diameter at about 28 years old is 53 centimetres in diameter. In fact, I think it's only 26 years old, 53 centimetres in diameter, pruned to five metres. We milled one earlier and uh, produces a lovely timber with a nice fine figure and nice grain. Not all our big trees are very big. This is our American black walnut tree, Juglans nigra. It was planted as a seed 28 years ago and it is only 26 centimetres in diameter. Uh, excluding the fact it was only this high when I, after one year and this high after two years, we could say it's growing about a centimetre in diameter per year. It's going to take possibly 60 years before I get a high value black walnut out of this, but uh, it's a big tree for the type. The next tree is this, uh, I've chosen this poplar, it's the largest of our poplar trees. We planted these as rooted cuttings back in 1987, so the tree is 28 years old. And in terms of diameter growth, we've now got a diameter of 62 centimetres in 28 years. Again pruned up to 6 metres to produce high quality poplar timber for furniture, possibly toys and uh, 
picture framing woods. This is one of our younger trees. I planted this in 2006, so it's nine years old. It's an Australian red cedar from New South Wales and Queensland. And in fact, it's probably the straightest young Australian red cedar that I've ever seen because up in New South Wales and Queensland, they have a lot of trouble with the tip moth that bores into the leading shoot and affects the shape of the tree. In terms of growth rate, in nine years, this tree has grown 13.4 centimetres in diameter. And I think we'll be able to maintain or even increase that growth rate such that we can produce a 50 and 60 centimetre Australian red cedar tree in less than 30 years. That's another 21 years and I've got no doubt it's possible. It's a very drought tolerant tree. It's adapted to climate change, both frost and dry. And I think we'll be able to prove that you can grow subtropical cabinet timbers right down here in Southern Victoria. This is uh, our largest California redwood. It's just shy of 80 centimetres in diameter and it's 28 years old. It's uh, been growing quite well. It was planted as a rooted cutting, pruned up to eight metres on these trees and you can see it's developed quite strongly, helping control soil erosion while growing a large diameter tree. Still a small patch of English oak here that I planted back in uh, 1996, 19 years ago. This one here actually on the edge is doing quite well. I pruned it up to about five meters and in those 19 years it has grown 26 centimeters in diameter. Again, I can maintain those growth rates but what I would need to do in this patch is to thin it out, reduce the number. Fortunately the thinnings are very good for shiitake mushroom production. I'll retain the best trees, thin out the others so that these can maintain their diameter increments and I'll have English oak. The interesting thing about English oak, the faster you grow it, the denser it is. And the same happens for the Australian red cedar that I showed you. In the other species, the faster they grow in diameter has really no effect, in my view, on their wood density and wood quality. In fact, having even growth over many years is much better than allowing the trees to compete severely for a long period of time. So this is our English oak, the last of our big trees.